my name is Stephen Wyard. I'm from the UK. Um, I'm currently a volunteer here at the Uganda Buddhist Centre. Um, I'm working on a number of things or helping in a number of areas. So I teach uh, meditation at the school every morning, which I love doing. Um, I also help a bit with the reading program that my wife Julie has started. And uh, I'm also helping to run the Saturday afternoon program, which we're running at the new centre in Kampala at Bunga. So at that centre, I'm teaching, med well, I'm leading meditation and I'm also uh, leading a Dharma discussion session. So that's what, what I'm doing now. Um, by profession, I'm an architect. Um, I've worked in different countries, so many, many years ago, probably 30 plus years ago, I worked for two years in Bhutan, which is a Buddhist country, pred predominantly a Buddhist country. Um, and then in between 1994 and 1999, I worked in Uganda. So we came as a family, we lived in Uganda for five years. Um, I was working as an architect. Um, yeah, and we, we really fell in love with Uganda and most importantly with the Ugandan people. We really enjoyed being here. Uh, so it was quite sad when we had to go back, but I carried on visiting. And then about eight years ago, I met, first of all, met Bhante Buddharakita, the founder of Uganda Buddhist Center and we became quite close friends and I used to visit him when I came out here when he was also in the country and uh, gradually the idea of coming to live here and volunteer for a while uh, became important so that's what we're doing now so I'm here with my wife Julie uh, we've sort of committed to being here for a year initially and, when, and then we'll see how things go right so what inspired me to become a Buddhist well, I mean, in, in, in Western countries, most uh, European Western countries, Buddhism um, has only really been uh, a fairly well-known practice, spiritual practice, religion for relatively quite a short time, maybe 50, 100 years. Uh, very few people are born as Buddhists, so most of us, we, we discover Buddhism, we encounter Buddhism. Uh, many cases, certainly in my case, um, all my life I've been interested in the spiritual life. Uh, so I'd say for 20 odd years, from my mid-twenties to my mid-forties, I was a practicing Quaker. That's a form of uh, Christianity. Um, and then when, uh, when I was in my mid-forties, I got, I got very interested in the whole subject of mindfulness and meditation. Um, in a way it led quite naturally from my Quaker practice because the way Quakers worship is they sit in silence. So they sit together in silence. It's a, it's a form of kind of group meditation you could say. So I was quite familiar with that and I was very interested. I found it a very beautiful practice um, but I wanted to learn more about it. So I had a look on, like most people do, I had a look on uh, the internet and I found that in Cambridge, where I lived, there was a Buddhist center uh, run by an organization called Tree Ratna. That means the Three Jewels. Um, and they ran meditation classes. So I went there, I tried it out, and almost immediately I sort of fell in love with the practice of the Buddhist practice of meditation. So that was how I first encountered it. And having discovered uh, the Buddhist practice of meditation, I then very naturally got interested in, well, what was the spiritual tradition that lay behind, that underpinned this practice, these practices? Um, so I then did a course on introduction to Buddhism, and very quickly I thought, this is the path for me. This is what I've been searching for. You know, often you're searching for something, you don't quite know what it is, yeah until you see it, you experience it, and then you know. Until that time, you're sort of guessing a bit. You're trying things, you're exploring, but when you, when you meet it, you really know it, and that was my experience. So how did I first encounter uh, mindful meditation? Well, um, when I was taught meditation practice, we were basically taught two 
very fundamental forms of Buddhist meditation. One was mindfulness meditation, uh, specifically the mindfulness of breathing, so focusing on the breath. Um, and the other one was the metta bhavana, so the cultivation of metta, the cultivation of loving kindness. So those two practices sort of support and balance each other very well. Um, I mean, I would say that I think that in a sense, all meditation is mindful meditation. You could even say the term mindful meditation is what we call a tautology. It's almost duplicating itself because by its very nature, meditation is a mindfulness practice. You know, we meditate with the whole of our experience, um, our mind, body, um, breath, breath awareness, uh, our emotions, our sense experience, the whole of our, the whole of our experience, the whole of our being um, is involved in the meditation. So, yeah, that's, that's the meditation that I learnt, um, or the approach to that, is, that's the, the approach that I first learnt, and uh, yeah, it, it changed my life, I think. Yeah, so what are the short-term and long-term benefits of practicing meditation? Um, I think that uh, there are many benefits. There are many benefits. Um, but maybe it's important to, uh, at this point, to draw a bit of a distinction between um, what I would call spiritual Buddhist-based meditation, mindfulness practice, and um, what's become quite popular now, what we might call secular mindfulness or secular meditation. And I think there is an important difference, actually. Um, so I think the, the, real, the real purpose of um, Buddhist meditation is not, not purely a self-awareness, self-development. It's actually for the benefit of all living beings. So the element of compassion, of caring, of metta, loving kindness, is very much a part of the spiritual practice. And the other thing perhaps to say is that the aspect of ethics is always present in Buddhist spiritual meditation. Um, we always base it firmly on good ethical practice, following the five Buddhist precepts. It's really important gives it a firm basis and a firm purpose. Whereas I think with secular mindfulness and secular meditation, there's more of an emphasis on self-help, self-development, um, a kind of therapeutic benefit, all, all of which is good, um, all of which is very helpful. Um, but I think you can maybe see there's a bit of a difference, or quite a big difference actually, between what I would call Buddhist meditation, spiritual meditation, and uh, secular meditation. So I think hopefully in that answer I've, I've alluded to some of the benefits of both forms of meditation. So I think the reason, the reason why you wish to do meditation is going to direct the, the benefits that you gain from it. So it's a very important Buddhist principle that the motivation with which we do something will inevitably create the kind of results that we get. So if we do it for you know, personal benefits for personal development, then maybe that will happen if we're lucky, if we practice well. Um, but if we have that deeper um, ethical um, practice of wishing to help all living beings, then hopefully those are the benefits that we will gain from it. So very quickly, the, the five um, Buddhist precepts, they tend to have what we might call the negative and positive aspects. So the first precept is, is the avoidance of harming any living beings, specifically avoiding killing any living beings. And the positive side of that is acting with, with loving kindness to all living beings, wishing to help all living beings. Uh, the second precept um, is to do with um, avoiding taken, taking what is not freely given, so not stealing, not taking advantage of people, not taking what somebody doesn't wish you to have, in other words. And the positive side of that is generosity, is acting with loving generosity, open-handed generosity, we even say. The third precept, the, um, the, the, the sort of negative side, if you like, it's not really negative, but 
uh, the, the, the sort of avoidance side is avoiding um, sexual misconduct. So we avoid doing things which are harmful to other beings in our, in our sexual emotional lives. And the positive side of that, again, is uh, living with contentment, simplicity, being content with what we have, not always chasing after things that we don't have, but valuing what we do have. Uh, the fourth uh, precept is, is right speech. So it's to do with, being, with honesty, with truthfulness. Uh, it's avoiding lying, avoiding deceiving people. And it's, it's about good communication. And that's not just honest communication, it's kindly communication. It's a communication that has the intention of helping the other person. And then finally, the last uh, is mindfulness, actually. So that, that's front and center of our, of our meditation practice. So it's, the avoidance is avoiding intoxicants, things that cloud the mind. I mean, whether it's things like alcohol, drugs, or whether it's things like maybe watching too much uh, TV or playing games on computers. All those things sort of cloud the mind a bit. So we try to avoid those, not completely maybe, a bit it's okay, but we're, we're aware of what we're doing. We're aware of the impact it has. So therefore we develop mindfulness. So that leads us straight into mindful meditation really. But all the other precepts are also, should also be present as well, I think.